Remote communities in northern Canada have used diesel for decades to generate electricity for their requirements. But now there's still a lot of talk about using renewables. Well, there's a project in Nunavut that is uh, getting ready to launch. And I'm going to talk to Emily He, who is a senior analyst with Pemina Institute, and she looks after the Renewables in Ro Remote Communities program. So welcome to the interview, Emily. Happy to be here. Can you give us an, an overview uh, of the project, please? Definitely. So this is the Santa Kilowack Wind Project, which is the first um, grid scale independent power producer project to be signed as of last week with the territorial utility, um, in this case, the Kulik Energy Corporation, also known as QEC. The project's in, been in development for over six years now. So this is a big win for the developers and the community. And if not for the continued perseverance of both the community and Nunavut Nukik Sauti Corporation, the IPP, um, this project wouldn't be the, the success it is now. So essentially this is an independent power producer who bears the capital costs of building the wind farm and any associated infrastructure, is that correct? That's right. So the IPP is responsible for constructing and the costs associated with the um, wind and also battery storage um, infrastructure. And then the utility pays the IPP for electricity that's generated throughout the project lifetime. Do we have any idea of how much per kilowatt hour or megawatt hour the utility will have to pay for that electricity? The utility is likely going to be paying around what it pays for um, generating diesel at the moment because the utility and, and community, uh, the utility and IPP have both uh, made assurances that the community isn't going to be experiencing any changes or increases to their electricity rate um, as, as a result of this project. So it would be dependent on the specific utility rate in the community at the moment. Okay, so the, the benefit here is in the short term is not lower uh, electricity rates, it's around the health benefits, uh, I mean, burning diesel in a community, that's a, a, a pollution issue. Uh, and uh, I would imagine that having to import diesel, uh, you know, is is a big issue for the for the community. Is, is that fair to say? There are lots of benefits like the ones that you listed. And while the there not might not be direct electricity rate benefits, there are definite um, economic benefits across the um, territory and in the community specifically. In Nunavut, they spend around 3% of their annual budget on diesel subsidies. That's around $60 million a year. And projects like this one mean that less diesel is needed throughout the territory and, and hence uh, taxpayer dollars don't need to go towards diesel subsidies as much. The project is also going to be employing uh, locals in the community throughout its construction and also once it's um, well into operations. So um, there are definite economic benefits, but like you said, diesel definitely has um, air quality, health, diesel spill, um, social harms that, that these projects um, are helping to offset. Now, uh, as opponents to renewables uh, remind us quite often, uh, the wind doesn't always blow. So I'm assuming that the diesel system will be kept in place for times when the, uh, the wind farm isn't producing enough electricity to meet the community's needs. Yeah, that's correct. So the diesel system will likely still be in place for backup purposes and also to supplement the wind energy. Um, there's also a battery that's going in with this project, which again will help to smooth some of those peaks. But um, from what I've heard, Santa Kilowack is a very windy place and has a really substantial wind resource. So I suspect that um, the wind turbines will be supplying quite a bit of power. It's it's predicted to offset around 50% of the community's diesel consumption. Um, so a substantial wind, bit of wind still. What's the significance of this agreement for uh, the regional economy for Nunavut? And in fact, for maybe for all of Northern uh, Canada, you know, or remote communities in Northern Canada? 
I think that this project is a huge milestone for the territory in um, kicking off the independent power producers and, and renewable energy development in communities and remote communities. It's the first of its kind and it's been um, spearheaded by a 100% owned Inuit organization, um, the Nunavut Nupik Saukti Corporation, which is ensuring that revenues are flowing directly back to Inuit in the territory and also um, through an agreement that NNC has with the community to the community itself as well. So I think that this project provides a lot of learnings for um, communities in Nunavut and across Canada of how um, renewable energy can really benefit local economies. Well, Emily, thank you very much for this. Really appreciate it. Anytime.